you got to be very, very careful of how the spirits are operating in your life, how, how you can test the spirits, how you can differ, de decipher, differentiate from the spirits, okay? Whether it's of God, whether it's of the devil, whether it's a Jezebel, whether it's a marine spirit, we've got to get informed. We got to have the information of them, okay? Now, another thing is, okay, when people watch these shows, okay? Now, remember, God gives you gifts and he does not take it back. Some people are born with the gifts. They never operate for God's kingdom with the gifts, but they do operate in their gifts with the satanic realm, with the dark demonic forces. Now, how does the Jezebel spirit have to do with this? Because it seduces them and makes them think because they have the power through the demonic entities, through the dark spirits. Now they can gain money, access, they, the riches, the fame, the power. That's what everybody wants mostly. That's what they mostly want. So it tricks them. It seduces them. Now we got people out there who are doing fortune telling. I'm talking about all over the TV, not just the little ones, but the lower levels. I'm talking about big, big level people. They are levitating. They are going in front of Times Square, New York City, doing all kind of magic tricks, sitting themselves in ice for two, three days. You're saying, how can this person do this? Oh my God, this person got to have power. Of course they have power. They have demonic possession that is in them. They have power. They have a lot of power. There are certain things you can Google on YouTube if you think I'm not telling the truth. There are videos where you can actually see where people are doing magic tricks. These big people now, big magicians. You can look it up on Google and YouTube. They're doing magic tricks, and you can see their eyes change. And you can see where the demon entered and took possession of them to perform the tricks, you guys. They are there on YouTube and on Google. It is real. There is a, they, they operate in this stuff, but there's a certain area where the demons are called upon. They might use a certain word, or the demon might know at, at what point they have an agreement with them, what point to use, uh, what point to enter, or whatever. And then now they're taking control of them. And they're not their self anymore. They are the demonic possession the spirit that is in them and it's controlling their body the host of course because it likes to be in the body and it's doing now the magic trick the levitation they wonder why they could stick fire all the way down their throat all the way back up they don't feel nothing they don't burn themselves you wonder why they could stick knives all down there those are demonic possessions big high rank spirits and those let you know that they are possessed it's not that they're that they're just gifted they're gifted with they're gifted with it and now they operate with the world of darkness Okay, those people who cut themselves in half, do all kind of stuff, turn your dollar into a hundred dollars. You take that dollar, for instance, that you already had, it was your dollar. They touch it, they put it to a hundred dollars. Now you deal with the hundred dollar open portal, the wrong gifts, the gifts that now Jezebel is operating in. Open in the portal, you got that hundred dollar. Yeah, I got a hundred dollar. Unbeknownst to you, you're so happy about this hundred dollar that they did that they turned into a uh, dollar to a uh, hundred dollar or ten dollars to a hundred dollar twenty whatever it was to a hundred dollar bill now you're so happy you go spend this money you have opened up a portal on your life not only have you opened up a portal on your life but on top of that you're spending the money you're using it so now you're gaining from it so now there's more demons trying to come into your life come into agreement with you entertaining you okay that's how it works the portals are open through money through performing a um Taking your wedding ring, doing little tricks with it. Be careful. Taking your Uno cards, your, 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 your cards that you play tarot cards with, whatever it is. Ouija boards, they come in that way. They begin to take possession of you if possible. Or, that's why it says they can deceive the very elect. Or, they open up a portal and somehow start to infiltrate your mind. Your mind is going somewhere else. You got the spirit of confusion. You're fearful. You got the spirit of fear, which can lead to premature death. You got heart issues going on. You guys, there is a... You can look this up on Google, too. Everything I say is a pure fact. There's a situation in 1970-something, 80, with the, uh, not, okay, well, poltergeist is one of them as well. There was a situation with the poltergeist. I'm going to go on there for a minute. But I wanted to speak on the exorcist. The poltergeist movie that was done in the 80-something, I think I was around 9 or 8 years old, 89, 80-something. The poltergeist movie, the little girl that played the poltergeist, uh, played the, uh, the little girl with the blonde hair, cute little, cute face girl. She got sick and died. She didn't live long beyond her years after that movie. She didn't live long. Matter of fact, I don't think she could even do part two or three. She died during that movie. She got some kind of mysterious cancer because somehow a portal was opened up on her life that allowed this demon possession to come into her, possess her, the demon spirit, excuse me, and get her sick with a, a different form of cancer. The same thing happened with some people who, who were in the movie along with her, accompanying her, acting in the movie. They got sick. They got very sick, okay? Murdered, so on and so forth. It's all over Google. It's in the media. It's no lie. I'm telling you a pure fact. There's the same thing with the poltergeist. 
the Poltergeist movie, excuse me, not the Poltergeist, excuse me, I just spoke on the Poltergeist, Poltergeist, the Exorcist movie, the first one in the 70s, 79, 70, whatever, everybody involved in that movie, the actors, even some producers or behind the scenes people, if I'm not mistaken, but a lot of people involved, if I'm not mistaken, about 80%, maybe, maybe even 100%, all died mysteriously. They got murdered. They got, I mean, they died brutally by boyfriends, by girlfriends, mysterious kind of forms of sickness, uh, uh, cancers, just on and on and on. These people got possessed due to the fact that they took this role for money, unbeknownst to them. They had to uh, embody the actual characteristics, embody the, the, the character or whatever it was. It opened the portal. Demons began to enter them and enter the people involved in their lives due to being involved in this movie unbeknownst to them. They got murdered by boyfriends. They got sick with cancer. They got so on and so forth. But they all died in a, in, in a horrible manner due to the fact that they did this exorcist movie. Very demonic, principality-like, high-ranked demons concerning this movie. It's like you had to embody that thing in order to even do the acting. I don't understand how people can take certain roles because me looking at the movie, I see that to do this role, you have to embody some kind of form of possession, some form of, you have to take your mind there, you guys. You have to really take your mind to the point where you're like, okay, let me see how it feels to be this. You've opened up a portal. You think it's just acting, but you open up a portal. Did you guys not know that even martial arts, I just recently learned by studying, martial arts is a big open door and an open portal to demonic possession, demonic activities, calling on the demonic spirits in your life. Why? One form is the meditation. When you meditate for a long time, your mind is blank, excuse me, especially when you're not living for Christ and you don't operate in, you know, in Christ's gifts and abilities. It comes into your mind. That's the first place it will attack is your mind. So you're meditating for hours, yoga, and so on and so forth. And these things are just coming about, roaming about, coming into your body and so on and so forth, unbeknownst to you. And they slip and they slide, but they do really sneakily, okay? Same thing with martial arts, meditating a lot, meditating, but you're meditating concerning your fighting. So it's bringing on these demonic things into your life, entities, spirits, so on and so forth. Now, martial arts fighting still Due to the style, due to the way it's done, it brings on demonic possessions. Okay, you want an example? Go to Google after we're done with this live. Look up Bruce Lee. How did Bruce Lee die? How did his son, uh, what was his name? Brandon Lee died. Both actors. They had to embody certain things. Bruce Lee was a great fighter. He had to be demon possessed. I'm not saying because he was a great fighter, but it tells you. He fought spirits daily. He was going crazy. His mind was gone. Oh my God, he's fighting demons here and there. People be like, what is he fighting? He was fighting spirits where people were seeing he was fighting spirits. He was going crazy. He couldn't really even function properly. There are very, uh, very much a lot of testimonies concerning Bruce Lee. Look it up. Look up how did he die. Look up what happened to Bruce Lee. Did he fight demons? It will all pop up. It will all pop up because of the martial arts. His gift in the martial arts led him to be misled uh demons open up portals for demons to come into him to come fight with him to confuse his mind to cause him to be fearful and he died with this very same problem brandon lee his son the very same thing happened hey angel how you doing god bless you very same thing happened with brandon lee bruce lee's son he died during the movie uh what was it the crow or one of those movies in the 80s or 90s was going along the same path as his father okay this is where perfect example of generational curse you guys Entered into his kids through the martial arts, through his gifts, okay, being possessed by these demons, entered his kids. Perfect example. Matter of fact, a couple of people in this family, good morning, beautiful. Per matter of fact, perfect, uh, a perfect example, a couple of people in this family actually dealt mysteriously because of the gift. He died during, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say the crow. A bullet that's supposed to be a blank bullet acting in a movie hit this man. It was a real, actual bullet, killed him. He did not make it past that set. Killed him. Bruce Lee's son, you guys, you can Google it. Bruce Lee, how he died mysteriously. Through, through his gift of martial art, he kept fighting demons over and over. They said even during the movies, he'll be fighting demons. His son, Brandon Lee, died mysteriously. And how they say it's a curse. Even the people who are not Christian can see it's a curse. 
demonic possessions due to the gifts, the Jezebel spirit operating in these gifts. Because they don't know Christ, they're not working for the kingdom of God. Instead of using it for God and God protecting them with the apostolic anointing, because they could have very well had the apostolic anointing, had the gifts of prophecy, had the gifts of laying hands. Instead, they used it for the world to gain something from the world. And all they did was gain death, premature death. They didn't have to die at that age. They died early. Premature death, all to their gifts and how Jezebel seduced them with their gifts. Trick Brandon, Brandon Lee, uh, Bruce Lee's son. He thinks he's going to act. And, and you know, and it's so bad because if you look at look at how they said it happened, when he got shot because he was doing the movie and it was done on the scenes, they thought he was faking his death. He was actually dying, and they're like laughing. And, and <laughs> but they said they, they didn't know. They said they felt so bad they didn't know that he was really dying. Instead of the blank bullet, there was an actual bullet that killed Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's son. A perfect example I can give you of so on and so forth, higher positions or gifts. As well, look at the president, okay? Look at the president, Ronald, not Ronald Reagan, Reagan excuse me. The president um, in the 60s, okay? The one that everybody loved, okay? Went along with uh, Marilyn Monroe. He was married, dating Mel Marilyn Monroe, who was a whole nother thing with her. Very demonic, very possessed uh, as well. Jezebel spirit all over her, all in her. But um, this, this um, president, okay? Uh, this president was his whole family. Just, my God, all in politics, one became a murderer, a famous murderer, killed a lot of people. Um, the father died in front of the child, in front of his wife, okay? All on camera, all on TV. They made sure that they plotted it and put it on TV, took him out, okay? As well as his cousins, his brothers. We're talking about the Kennedys, you guys. Bobby Kennedy, uh, um... All Robert Kennedy, all the Kennedys, and how they died so mysteriously. Generational curses, demonic entities coming into their lives, using their very gifts through the Jezebel spirit, using their gifts, showing them that since they had this talent, they like to, you know, listen, demons like to go on higher ranks. They like to deal with people who have a certain title and a certain position, and they like to get into that person, down take them, kill them, steal them, destroy. What it says, the, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy and then conquer and say, oh, yeah, look what I did. I got that person. That's what they like to do through their gifts. Their gifts are speaking, being able to speak out, being able to do um, politics, being able to do certain things. Their gifts were used on them through the demonic entities, through the world of darkness, through the devils, possessing them, allowing them to live according to the money. The love of money, again, is the root of all evil. Not using money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. That's why we have to be careful. What We have to be careful with the gifts that we have. God gives it to you, like I said, it will not take it away. You may have wisdom, you may have knowledge, you may have understanding. All through the spirits of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But how do you use it? How do you use it? You can have so much knowledge that you know so much to the point. Look at the Haitian gentleman that died about two years ago, 2018, 2019. The whole Haitian community, including myself. Yes, I, I will speak to you on that, young lady. I'll speak to you on that. There are, there are certain uh, people like that Haitian gentleman that died. I want to say 2018, 2019. The whole Haitian, Haitian community was devastated. Pretty good boy, uh, man owned his own, um, I think he owned his own like club. He owned a lot of things. He was pretty well known. They killed him in Broward, you guys. Um, the police killed him. They said he was getting going crazy. He had bipolar or something. They shouldn't have killed this man. But what happened was he went so crazy. He had a lot of knowledge. But the demons was take, overtaking him now. And he started to go crazy. The police came, police after police. Some of them even tried to give him a chance. You could see it on the video. Then the last one was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I can't take this. Boom, 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 killed him. Gun down, dead. Due to too much knowledge. You have to be careful. If you're not operating in Christ, you have to be careful. Because now you're too much knowledge, you're too much wisdom. Without the understanding, because they all three go hand in hand, now you've got a problem. Just like some of these people, you say, how, how did they just die in this manner? Some people, you, you just wonder how. Because the, the, the demons start to possess them, start to infiltrate them, start to trick them. And now all of a sudden, their mind is going crazy. You start to see there's a confusion spirit there. You know, you can't even hold a whole conversation with them sometimes. The conversation goes from the rainbow is blue, pink, purple, red, uh, to, hey, hey, that water tastes nasty, man. Man, you ever tasted this water before? Then it goes to a whole nother. You can see the spirit of confusion, spirits of confusion in them, the possessions in them from the many demonic activities many demonic things that is in them and they like to use the knowledgeable people they open up portals again the ouija board the so on and so forth 
the people that already had certain gifts, the gifts of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the gift of all these things. But they, they got seduced by the Jezebel spirit, you guys. They got too far and too deep into it. They didn't know when to say no, when to say, okay, this enough is enough. Like I said, the apostolic anointing, which is missing in a lot of churches, the laying of hands, the praying, the prophesying, the speaking in tongues, the edification of the church, the edification of the individual, the praying in the spirit, it's all missing out the churches, you guys. And with this being missing out the church, you can't help but to fail. You're going to fail. There's no way past it because the leaders are all now worried about their title, how much tithes and offering they get into their pockets. And I'm not saying no pay tithes or offering. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is they have gotten caught up with the love of the money, with the love of their cars, with the love of their positions and their titles. And now they have been seduced and tricked and seduced and trick you. And now for the next two or three or four generations, you will continue to be cursed. Your kids will be cursed because unbeknownst to you, you have opened up a portal on your life. You have opened up a chain of, what should, what, what should you say, the domino effect? When it hits one domino, all the thousands of dominoes keeps going down. It can go down for hours. The domino effect on your life. How do you take it off? You have to get deliverance. There's deliverance being done. There's apostolic people who have deliverance, okay? They can pray over you, lay hands on you. They can prophesy to you, speak deliverance. It depends on how, you know, how God uses them, okay? The person has to be willing to receive these things, okay? Be, some people say they want healing. When you pray for them, it takes it take about an hour and a half to pray for them because they're not willing to receive it the way they made it seem like. Be willing to receive it. It'll be done quicker, okay? Perfect example. There are some people, you can speak on the phone to them five, ten minutes. They, got, they received their full deliverance and healing from witchcraft, from whatever it is, because they were willing, they were, they were eager to receive it. They had the mustard seed faith or the crazy faith to receive that healing, okay? So the gifts are real. The gifts of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of Christ, the gifts are real that he blessed everybody with. They were born with some gifts, seeing, uh, um, operating, doing open heart surgery, whatever it is. But who are they operating under? You're either operating under the Holy Spirit or you're operating under the spirit of darkness, Okay, you can't walk neutral. I know people think that they can walk neutral in between grounds. It, it's not true. You're either on the devil's side or you're on God's side. That's it. That's it. You think you're neutral because you feel comfortable with you on the devil's side or God's side. That's it. Now, when you operate with the spirit of darkness, open portals. Things come into your life, generational curses will fall upon your kids, whether it's then or, then or later on, but it will visit for three and four generations. The Bible says, and the Bible also says, uh, uh, God will visit for three or four generations and so on and so forth. That's why some people like uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that's why he always says, I'm the father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He blessed them for generations to generations to generations due to the fact that they were obeying God. They did everything that God wanted them to do. So he blessed them for generation to generation to generations all the way down. King David, all the way down. Jesus came through the line, through the bloodline. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Okay, but then again, he will visit and he will curse. He will visit and he will cause famines, just like he, just like what's going on right now. There are famines going on right now, you guys. Right now, with the Corona situation, it is a famine. Some people are hungry in some countries, even here in America. Some people can't find water; they're thirsty. Some people can't find certain things. Some people are wanting and needing. I actually went into Walmart and took a picture. Of, thank God there's still some kind of diapers, but I did prophesy that there will be a shortage of diapers. Man, that shelf was almost, <laughs> that shelf, shelf was about 60%, 70% empty with the diapers. Like I said, you know, people are in need. It's a time of need. Okay? So, yes, there's a famine time right now. There is so much stuff going on with the seducing spirits that have people thinking, not me, not me. They're out running around when the, when the Bible says... And the law of the land says, do not run out unless you need to go to the store. Like, for instance, I have to go to the store. I'm probably going to go to the store for a little bit. But I'm not going to sit there and run the streets all day long. Because now if I get the coronavirus, I cause it on myself. That's for whoever. Because you're running in the street too much. You're thinking you can't be harmed. You can be harmed. Now, the Bible does say, put on the full armor of Christ. And no plague or no pestilence or nothing of this will come near you or your family or your doorposts or your home. Correct, true indeed. But if you're putting yourself out there on purpose now, then you're just being pure disobedient, then you will feel the wrath. That's just how it works. The Bible has precepts 
and laws and you have to operate in these precepts and the laws and it does say you have to <laughs> you have to operate in the law of the land the laws of the land here he are here to protect you now there will be a time which is getting to that time right now where the chips and so on and so forth the 666 and all that is about to take place and um you know at that time you have to differentiate where which which law is more important now god or the land right now we still have to operate under the land but when that time comes, God understands why you cannot operate in the law of the land. Because he knows that you, you have to either choose him or the law of the land. Bottom line. But there are situations right now where people are in famine. We in America are in a famine right now. Okay? Like I said, some people don't feel it. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing and the blessing that God has put upon them. They won't feel it like that. But some people are feeling it. Some people are suffering. Okay? And what happened? The Jezebel spirit seduced them and tricked them. Let them think that don't prepare, don't do this, don't do that. It's okay. When they went out to get stuff, it was scarce. It, milk wasn't there. Yogurt wasn't there. Water wasn't there. Juice wasn't there. Every time they go, it's not there. It's not there. Because when they told you to go store up and go stock up, you stayed in your house. Thinking that it was okay. It's not going to touch me. It's not going to come near me. No, no, no. We have to use wisdom. We have to use knowledge. And we do have to use understanding, you guys. We have to still do what we need to do. We have to still be obedient and reverence Christ. Even if you don't live for Christ, still be obedient and reverence him. So that way he can protect you the way he wants to protect you. Amen? But yes, you guys, the apostolic anointing is missing. Okay? The laying of hands. There are people who have it. Okay? Me and my prophetic sisters have done certain things. God has allowed us to do it because of the obedience of him. There are other people that I speak to on the phone all the time. Prophetesses, so on and so forth. Uh, they pray and honey the angels is, is at your door baby I mean they are out there I have a prophetic sister of mine who is married to an apostle I mean it's done praying is done prophesying is done but in the church itself that's why everybody's in a confinement in their house these gifts are missing they have been so seduced that they took it out of the church and put themselves in the high title that they wanted to be in and now, they don't have the gifts operating. Everybody just sitting there with, like Ezekiel 37 chapter, dry bones. Sitting there like dry bones, sitting there like dead corpuses, dead bodies. And you just, oh, I can't wait till the service get finished. Uh, okay, I'm hungry. Oh, don't worry, I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach real quick so y'all can go. Come on now. If a person was really feeling the move of Christ, they would want to be in church for hours. They would want to be in church all night. They would want to be in church all the time. But the problem is, it's missing the true anointing. So people don't want to be there because they already know that. Okay, I'm just going to sit here, just get blessed. Most of the time, they're not even getting blessed. They're getting messed, messed up, not blessed. You know, because there's nothing there. There's nothing operating but the Jezebel spirit. It looks like one way. There's a way that seems right unto man, but in the end, it leads to death. A spiritual death. A physical death. A sickness that stays over your body and lingers there because nobody laid hands and put the apostolic anointing in your life. They could not use it effectively because the churches told them, you got to go. You got to leave. Don't do that. You're a babe. Don't do this. Quiet. Shh, shh, shh. Don't do that. Because they don't want to be exposed. In all actuality, in all reality, they need to be exposed because they're doing their will and their way and their works and not Christ's works. Amen. So you guys know the difference between the spirits that's operating. Know the difference between who's prophesying, proper lying. Know the difference between who's speaking of Christ and who's speaking just of the world. There are people, like I said on the TVs, there are people who are spiritually gifted, but in what spirits? Is it the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, or the spirit of God? I mean, excuse me, the spirit of the God of the, the world, the devil, Satan, the demonic entities. Because a lot of times, let me show you how I can tell. A lot of times there are people, they will constantly say, God, 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 to God be all the glory, to God, God, God. They will never say Jesus. That is a big indicator. They will never say in the name of Jesus or Jesus. They don't believe in Jesus, which is a big indicator, and that's an occult system, which is an open door and a portal to the devil. Or they constantly just say, God, 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 God. All the time. Now, there's many gods. There's the gods of this world. There's the god of the sun. There's a sun god. There's a water god. There's the idolatry gods. There's the Buddha. There's all kind of gods. So what god are you associating yourself with when you're saying God? How many rappers, singers, and actors get on there and say, I like to thank Jesus Christ? No. What do they say? I like to thank God because they know they're tricking everybody by saying God. Okay? Like I said, there's an ex-satanist 
name John Remember is powerful evangelist right now. All you got to do is say a word or just lay a hand. Boom! You wiped out with the anointing of Christ because he gave his life to God. He walked with Satan, talked to Satan, sit with Satan in his living room, dealt with the Satan kingdom for years. But God turned his life around. Ex-Satanist John Ramirez. Look it up on YouTube. This man right here, no joke. Okay? He turned his life around for the best. So now he, he exposes what the devil did not want to be exposed. God wanted that to happen in his life. For him to expose, he didn't know what, what he was doing. He thought he was just living off of fame, doing this, doing that. He didn't know that God was going to turn around in his life and expose the devil for what he truly is. That's why sometimes certain situation, it looks like a certain way, but it's good. Because God is operating. God is going to do a change. God is going to bring about something that's going to change this person's life and expose some things. Okay? But yes, know the spirits that is operating. Test the spirits. Okay? Don't let people just prophesy over you and they tell you some, oh, you're going to die tomorrow and da 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 and, you know, this and that. Go and, go and put some tree leaves around your head for three days or whatever. Just stuff that, that, that's not God, you guys. Okay? Now, I'm not saying a person can't prophesy. I tell you, you're going to die. You, you might be dying. But what I'm saying is just test the spirits. Be a little bit more careful with what you allow in the portals that you open up on your life. The psychic, the palm reading and all that, those are gifts that God blessed the person with as a baby or they attain the gifts, but however, they use it for the dark, demonic systems and entities of the world that's not being used by the Holy Spirit in their lives. Amen? So just know the spirit, test the spirits. And if I were you, if you do do these things, if you're listening or somebody shows you the video and you're listening, turn your life around for the better. Because right now we are inside the homes for a reason. God is awakening you up. God wants to do something in your life. Let God do it. Let him overtake you. You already got the gift. All you got to do is let him in now. Let him turn your life around and he will use you mightily for his kingdom. Stop, stop building up Satan's kingdom and let God use you for his kingdom. Amen. Let him have his perfect will and way in your life. You guys, I thank you all for listening. Amen. I'm going to call you, Ainge. I thank you all for listening. God bless you. God be with you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Please keep in mind that kingdom first, the kingdom of Christ first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto thee. What are all these things? The spiritual gifts. Everything you ask for, he will give you the desires of your heart. I am a living testimony. How? Seek ye first his kingdom. Faith, healing, whatever. Restoration. God will give it to you. There are many countless testimonies out there for what God will do in a person's life. You guys have a blessed, wonderful day. I pray and I declare and I decree over your life that you shall be a hearer, you shall be a seer in the spirit, and you shall be a receiver to the knowledge, the wisdom, and the spirits of the understanding that God will bless you with. The Father up in heaven, Jehovah Jireh, through Jesus Christ. Amen? Till next time.